Number 8. Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. Measuring 34 miles from each end, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is the world's longest sea crossing and the open sea fixed link. It has three cable stayed bridges, an undersea tunnel, and four artificial islands spanning across Ling Ding Yang Channel. Inspired by the Chesapeake Bay Bridge in Maryland, a businessman from Hong Kong named Gordon Wu originally proposed the idea of linking Hong Kong, Macau, and Zhuhai back in the 1980s. Construction on the Chinese side of the HZMB project started in late 2009. The Hong Kong side began two years later, and the system was finally opened up to the public in 2018. The HZMB's three cable-stayed bridges are between 879 feet and 1,700 feet long. It takes six or so minutes to drive through the 4.3-mile-long undersea tunnel, and the entire bridge and tunnel system is around 20 times longer than the infamous Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Officials say that the crossing was built to withstand the winds of over 211 miles per hour and earthquake magnitudes that reach up to 8 on the Richter scale. It was designed to last 120 years, although its safety and the structural integrity of the seawall have already been called into question. The project has also received criticism as a giant waste of taxpayer dollars thanks to the heavy restrictions and extensive paperwork processes needed for anyone who wants to use their personal vehicle on the crossing instead of taking a bus. On the other hand, the Chinese government has praised the HZMB as a crucial link between the cities it serves. Number 7. Qinghai Tibet Railway Spanning 970 square miles, the Tibetan Plateau is listed as the world's highest and largest plateau. Until relatively recently, its lack of transportation infrastructure imposed serious limitations on the whole of the Tibetan economy and the country's ability to import things from China. With an average elevation exceeding well over 14,800 feet, mankind once thought it was impossible to build a railway along the plateau. Oxygen levels aren't only half what they are at sea level, making altitude sickness not only a possibility, but practically a guarantee for anyone not accustomed to such high altitudes. But the potential benefits of a railway linking Tibet's remote cities with China's most populated urban centers motivated officials to start thinking outside the box, and construction on the Qinghai Tibet Railway started in the early 1980s. To combat the low oxygen levels, pressurized chambers mimicking the oxygen content at sea level were built along the route for workers. Nicknamed the Railway to Heaven, the first piece of the 1,215-mile route was opened to the public in 1984. The second was finished in 2006. Altogether, the route is made up of 675 bridges and 10 tunnels. The railway runs along the Tangula Pass, which is also home to the world's highest rail station at 16,640 feet above sea level. Each passenger rail car that runs along this route today is equipped with an oxygen supply system as well as multiple oxygen masks. Every passenger is required to sign an agreement, acknowledging that they're aware of the health risks associated with traveling along the railroad. The train's engines are also turbocharged, giving them enough strength to power through the thin atmosphere. In addition to facing elevation-related challenges, the large part of the railroad rests on permafrost. To stop the frozen soil from melting under the heat of the passing trains, the tracks are fixed on elevated rock piles, which allow hot air to be dispersed by passing winds before it can hit the ground. The tracks are also equipped with thermopylons, which absorb heat. Climate change could challenge the system's ability to operate in the future, but for now, experts are keeping a close eye on the conditions and doing everything in their power to keep the railroad running while protecting the environment. Number 6. China's Failed Megacities As a country with a rapidly growing population, China has undergone an unprecedented construction boom in the last 40 years. Many of its projects have caught the attention of people outside the country, with some buildings being hailed as incredible feats of engineering, while others make headlines as complete flops. Planned cities tend to fall in this latter category thanks to the simple fact that many of them fail to attract newcomers, turning them into desolate ghost towns without ever being populated. One of China's most infamous failed megacities is called Kangbashi. In the remote Inner Mongolia province, it was built during the early 2000s as a new district of the city of Ordos. Unlike many of China's other megacities, Kangbashi was not built on the prediction that the majority of the country's population would eventually migrate to huge cities. The planned district was situated in the middle of the desert during a coal mining boom, which brought both money and business to the area. 
The original plans estimated that a million people would move into Kangbashi by 2023, but coal prices dropped during construction, prompting developers to dial back the predicted population to 500,000, then down to just 300,000 residents. Despite these bumps in the road, Kangbashi was overbuilt. 40,000 apartments were erected, as well as roadways, schools, a university, a stadium, parks, shopping malls, government buildings, libraries, restaurants, museums, and more. And people did actually move there, but not that many. And definitely not enough to make the new Ordos district feel like a bustling city. For the first years of its existence, Kangbashi looked like a ghost town. By 2017, about one-third of its housing was filled, still a far cry from its intended numbers. In 2021, news sources claimed that the city was finally improving due to an education boom that was attracting newcomers in waves. Officials and state-sponsored media reports have even described Kangbashi as a boom town. According to one claim, there were less than 500 empty apartments left in the city. But there has also been some speculation that vacant units were simply taken off the market to boost real estate prices. It seems like the only way to know whether the claims of Kang Bashi's newfound success are true or not is to travel there and explore it or talk to someone who has themselves. A lot of failed megacities in China and elsewhere have become popular tourist destinations for those seeking an off-the-beaten-path experience. Does this sound like your idea of a fun trip, or do you struggle to understand the appeal? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the video. Number 5. Itaipu Dam On the Piranha River, along the border of Brazil and Paraguay, the Itaipu Dam is the world's third largest hydroelectric dam. It produces more energy than any other dam on the planet. Negotiations between the two countries started in the 1960s out of a shared interest in hydroelectric development. Construction officially began in the early 1970s and the facility started operating in 1984. Itaipu's power-generating structure is almost 4 miles long, the maximum height of 643 feet, or about 65 stories. The dam itself is made of four smaller dams that are linked together, with a spillway measuring 1,585 feet. While Brazil and Paraguay have equal rights to the electricity the plant's 20 generating units produce, Paraguay only uses 15% of its share which provides for 90% of the country's total energy. Under the original terms of the treaty the country signed, Paraguay was required to sell excess power to Brazil for $124 million per year until 2023, but the annual payment was tripled in 2009 thanks to a new settlement. The Itaipu Dam has been praised as one of the seven wonders of the modern world, but one of the biggest controversies around the project was the destruction of a natural wonder known as the Guaira Falls. Consisting of 18 waterfalls in seven groups, they once represented the world's greatest volume of falling water. Sadly, they were flooded just after the dam's reservoir was built. Protesters spoke out as the waters began to rise, and in just two weeks, the falls had vanished completely beneath the reservoir's surface. In addition to the drowning of the Guaira Falls, the dam's construction displaced about 10,000 families out of their homes. Number 4. Milau Viaduct with a height of 1,104 feet, the Milau Viaduct in France is the world's tallest bridge. Measuring 8,070 feet long, it covers over one of Europe's longest and deepest gorges, the Tarn Valley. During the 1980s, government officials started brainstorming possible ways to bypass holiday traffic that congested the existing route between Paris and Spain over the summer. They were also interested in making the commune of Milau more accessible to benefit its residents and businesses. Construction began in late 2001 after years of negotiation, design, and safety studies. Most cable-stayed bridges are built in smaller sections and lifted into position using cranes. But the Malau Viaduct's size forced its developers to come up with a new method. Sections of the road deck were built on either side of the viaduct and then carefully pushed across pylons until they were in place. Miraculously, no lives were lost while building the viaduct, despite the many engineering risks that were involved, and it was finished in just three years. The Malau Viaduct opened publicly to traffic in 2004. Today, it's known for both its size and beauty, with a sleek, unimposing design that incorporates nicely into the landscape. Number 3. Yangbaoshan Bridge Built over the Qingxi River in China, the Yangbaoshan Bridge is the world's first six-lane bridge that's over 984 feet in height. It was finished in 2022 as part of the newly constructed Guiyang Huangping Expressway. 
which was built to shorten the travel time between Guiyang and Huangping County from three and a half hours to 90 minutes. Measuring 3,648 feet, the Yangbao Shan Bridge is one of three bridges, four tunnels, and three connection hubs that were part of the highway project. All three bridges, including the Gangji Bridge and the Wumei River Bridge, passed through incredibly steep gorges. Their designs are complicated and construction efforts were dangerous, yet the bridges were completed on schedule. Number 2. Nei Da. Planned cities are usually built based on the belief that people will one day move into them, and sometimes that doesn't actually happen. This seems to be the case for Myanmar's capital city, Nei Pi Da. Myanmar is one of Asia's poorest countries. Built in the early 2000s, Nei Pi Da contrasts its surroundings with its oddly upscale appearance. Smoothly paved streets are lined up with pristine looking houses, shopping malls, hotels, a stadium, museums, four golf courses, a towering gold pagoda, and many government buildings including a massive city hall and an extravagant palace for the president. Officials say that about a million residents live in the city, but visitors have reported seeing barely anyone at all and have described the area as having a post-apocalyptic feel. Even the 20-lane highways leading in and out of the metropolis and to and from the nearby airport are practically empty. Most of Naypyidaw's citizens seem to be people who were forced to move there, including civil servants and government officials. Many spouses and children stayed behind in the former capital city Yangon, as well as foreign workers who often fly to Naypyidaw for meetings and fly straight back to Yangon afterwards. Most countries have refused to move their embassies from Yangon to the new area, including the United States even after being asked by the Myanmar government to do so. Nobody seems to know why the country's leadership decided to build Nei Pi Da. Officials claim that Yangon was too congested for further government expansion, while many think that their real goal was to build a fortified citadel able to withstand foreign invasions and civil uprisings. Rumors say that the unusually wide highways were built so planes could land on them if the need ever rose, and there's also talk about a secret bunker network under the housing district that was built for high-ranked members of the government. Ironically, people were forced to move out of the area to make room for Nei Da, which has been nicknamed the world's emptiest megacity. And at number one, Lu Zhijiang Bridge. At 2,618 feet long, the Lu Zhijiang Bridge in southwestern China's Yunnan province is relatively short compared to the world's other longest bridges, but it's impressive in its own right for being the longest single tower suspension bridge on Earth. It's held up by a singular column anchored into a deep slope while cables support its weight on both ends. The towering structure connects two tunnels that are built straight into mountainsides. Perched almost a thousand feet above a narrow canyon, it was constructed to be used as a quicker connection between Yunnan province and the rest of China. The bridge has also made it easier to get from one place to another within the province, shortening the travel time between cities of Yuji and Zhuzhong from an hour and a half to just two minutes. Construction started out in 2019 and was finished within the three-year deadline, thanks to robots that helped finish the job. In the future, the Lu Zhijiang Bridge will serve as part of a 124-mile expressway, which is being built to improve the passage from China to other countries like Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam. Thanks for watching. Have you heard of an interesting mega project that wasn't on our list today? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now.